Hey guys, Anthony Fishwana here, founder of AP Growth. If you're looking to build your wealth in the stock market, you're going to want to subscribe. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the safest way to make money with options trading. So if you're new to options trading, then this video is going to be great for you. If you want to find a way to get your toes wet, this is the video for you. So without further ado, let's dive into the charts and see what we got for you. The strategy we're talking about today is selling cover calls and selling cover calls is the safest way to get your toes wet into options trading because you technically cannot lose money. You can only make money. The risk is you can stop yourself from potentially making even more money. So let's give an example. Let's say you own 100 shares of Neo stock. You can now sell one call contract because remember one contract is equal to 100 shares. So you can only do this strategy if you own at least 100 shares of a specific stock. For Neo, you would need at least $3,400 at the current price because if you own 100 shares of Neo at $34 per share right now, well, that would cost 3,400. So if you have that much money, you can now sell at least one cover call and you could choose a strike that is 10 to 20% above the current price expiring in two to four weeks. The stock is now trading at $34 per share. Let's say you choose a strike in one month. We go to about middle of January and we choose the $40 strike because that's 20% above the current price. Well, if NEO rises to above $40 per share within that month by expiration, then you're forced to sell all of your shares at that current price. Now, the reason why this is so safe is because you can't lose money. You only gain money. You gain a credit when you actually sell the right to sell your shares at that strike. And it will only get sold if the stock rises above that price by the expiration. If NEO finishes the month at $39 per share, will you keep your shares and you keep that 1% return, let's say, on your money? Let's look at the options chain now to actually show the kind of return you could get if you did pull this off. To check out the expiration in a month, we're gonna look at the January 14th, 2022 expiration. We're gonna scroll down to the calls and we're gonna look at the $40 strike here and that would be giving us a return of 3%. So we would collect 3% for selling one covered call if we own 100 shares of NEO. 3% on the $3,400 that we spent to buy the shares. So here you're getting a 3% return for one month and your cost basis is say $34 per share. The stock would have to rise 20% to go through the strike. So in one month, if NEO rises 20%, you keep the 3%, which is the premium here, which is $1.24, and you also gain the 20% in the stock appreciation. So in one month, if Neo rises to above 40, you get a return of 23%. That sounds so good and almost too good to be true. Now, the, the cons, the issue with this strategy is what if Neo rises to $45 per share by expiration? Well, you get the same 23% return, but you don't get that 35 to 40% return you would have got if you didn't put this cover call position on and, and you just held the stock without the cover call position attached to it. That is the con of the strategy. However, if you are just happy knowing, hey, oh well, because I got 20% in a month, if that's okay with you, then put this position on. If there are stocks you really do not want to sell because either it is appreciated so much and you will take gains on the stock position, like myself with Tesla stock, you might not really want to sell the position because you have to pay a lot in taxes. So this might not be a strategy for you. However, if you're trading and you're looking to swing trade and you're okay with holding a stock for one, two, three months, and you just want the 10, maybe 20% returns, then that is perfect for you. Just know you will not take any loss whatsoever if you put this position on. You will only take the loss if you try to close the cover call position after the stock has appreciated towards your strike before the expiration. I'm gonna say that again. You will only take a loss on this trade. This is There's only one way to possibly take a loss on the trade. And that is if you close the cover call position after the stock has appreciated towards your strike before the expiration of the call contract that you chose. You cannot take a loss if you put this position on and you leave it until expiration. The only thing you do is reduce your potential gains if the stock appreciates far past the strike you chose. Again, this strategy is fantastic on higher implied volatility names, but what you don't wanna do is choose stocks just because they have a higher implied volatility and you collect more premium. You wanna choose stocks that you genuinely believe are going to increase in value 
buy them, once you own them, then sell cover calls against the position expiring in one month, let's say. So you collect just a few extra, extra percent on your money if the stock does appreciate towards where you think it's gonna go. All I'm saying is don't just buy a stock because there's high premiums. You wanna buy the stock because you genuinely believe in the short to medium term, this stock is going to go up. Look at the setup first. If you, if you like the setup, then you're gonna buy the stock. And then you're just gonna sell the cover calls against the position because you wanna collect a few extra percent. Don't do the reverse because what can happen is you can buy a stock because the premiums are high, sell the cover call and the stock just keeps going down and congrats, you got that 3%, but then your stock depreciated 10%. So it's great because yeah, you know, you only, you only lost 7% because you got the 3% for selling the cover call, but now you're down 7% still. So just choose the setup and the stock first with great fundamentals, then sell cover calls against the position potentially to increase the returns if you're okay with selling the stock in the short term. Another example here might be on Blink. You might say there's truly good support around this $27 level. So you don't think the stock is gonna drop much more than 10% and you wanna get an entry here at around 32. Not a bad, not a bad entry. Uh, $30 would be a, a better entry, but if you got it in at 32, then you could sell the cover call at the $40 strike because it's a nice round number and you might think, you know, it might not go much above that in the next month. So you would own the stock at $32 per share, and then you would sell the cover call at $40 per share, expiring in one month. Looking at the options chain for Blink, expiring in one month, January 14th, 2022, we look at the calls and we look at the $40 strike here. We see, and again, it's just below 3% because we're collecting $1.16. How I see this as a 3% return is because if you round $1.16 to $1.20 and you times it by 100, you get to 120 because remember one call contract is multiply by 100 because it's 100 shares worth. So this is actually 120 if rounded up. And then you just divide the 40 by the, the 120 and you get three. So this is a 3% return on your money in one month. And you get that same 3% if Blink goes up and past 40 by expiration, or if Blink stays the same, or if it goes down, you always get the 3%. The only thing that impacts you is if it goes far above 40, then you don't get the extra appreciation on the stock past 40 because you capped yourself at 40. However, if Blink goes up to 38 in one month, well, you've got the appreci appreciation from 32 to 38 and you kept the 3%. So you get about 18% return from Blink going from 32 to 38 in one month because you have the 3% and the 15% in the stock appreciation. An example of a big loss that happened to me with cover calls was two times on Tesla stock. I'll show you the first time back in the beginning of 2021. Right here, the stock was going on a rampage at the end of 2020 and I sold cover calls on all of my Tesla shares expiring at the beginning of January. It was the first week, it was January 10th was the expiration. I chose the $750 strike. Right here at the middle of December, basically I chose a 750 strike and the stock was trading around 650. So I thought, hey, in uh, two weeks, do I think Tesla's gonna go up to 750 or higher? Nah, I don't think so. It just had a crazy run. It could probably consolidate for a bit. What do you know? Had another parabolic rise and I closed out the position when Tesla got to 800 and I took a huge loss because I didn't want my shares to get sold. It was about a $100,000 loss on my $1 million position. And that hurt, that really hurt. I learned my lesson there. And so I thought I learned my lesson because I did the same mistake right over here. When Tesla was going up here, I sold the calls at the $1,000 strike expiring at the beginning of November as we were going on this rampage here. So Tesla went parabolic. I thought, you know, it's not going to go much higher than 1,000. And it kept going all the way up to 1,200. So I had to roll my call contracts. This is the mistake that I actually learned at least. I rolled from the 1,000 strike in November to the 1,200 strike in January. So basically now, as long as Tesla doesn't go much above 1,200 by the beginning of January, then I'm gonna be happy. My shares will get sold, but at least to be in January in the new year, so I won't have to pay taxes until April of 2023 if they do get sold and Tesla does rise above 1,200 by the beginning of January. And the beginning of January is only a couple weeks away now, so I am okay with my shares getting sold at price. What I would do is I would sell puts to actually buy all my shares back, and I will be okay with that. So 
those are the lessons I learned with selling cover calls and how it can be potentially dangerous if you don't want to get rid of a position for two reasons. Number one, you might think that the stock is going to keep going up extremely high and won't have a period of consolidation or a pullback. Or if you have massive gains in the position already and you don't want to pay those capital gains in the current year. That's why it pushed out the call contracts from November to January. So that way, if I do, if they do get sold, then at least I have a lot of time before I pay any capital gains on that. That is the safest way to get started in options trading. I hope you enjoyed the strategy. Thanks so much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you appreciate it and subscribe for more videos just like this. I want to help you achieve financial freedom in the stock market. Thanks again so much for watching. I appreciate the support always and I'll see you in the next video.